Hey guys, it's Brida once again, and welcome back to part 4 of our XCOM Enemy Unknown walkthrough. Uh, we're going to get right back into the game here, where we're going to go to the Situation Room. Something's going down. We're going to find out what's happening. Commander, good news. The Council has donated a satellite. Our current satellite uplink facility can support up to two satellites, so I recommend we launch the new one immediately. New satellite. Would you look at that? Okay. Launch satellite. Where do we want to put it? Hundred dollars per month. What does it do? We have a satellite here, and. Hmm. Okay, now I'm getting a little bit. Let's put them all here because it seems like if we get more satellites there, then we're going to get more of a bonus for doing it. Um, let's get the scientists from that. Let's do that because we we spread out the wealth a little bit there. It's a hundred dollars to do that, fifty to do that, and then we get the bonus from doing that as well. That seems like a good plan, if you ask me. <laughs> so I'll put one in Canada. Keep Canada safe. We'll launch it right there. With this additional satellite in place. We've gained a significant upgrade to our overall coverage. I recommend we begin scanning for alien contacts right away. Hmm. Well, we'll find out if this is a good idea to put them close together, or if it was a bad idea to have them so close. Satellite. You're telling me that we should risk the lives of our troops so we can take one of these things alive? Yes. Without a live specimen, I'm afraid we've reached the pinnacle of what my team is able to accomplish. And how do you suggest we do this, Doctor? The autopsy I've just completed confirms that the alien's physiology is quite similar to our own. A highly concentrated electrical current delivered at close range should cause mirror... Close range? And what happens if it doesn't work? Do you really think this is worth the risk? I do. We do not know our enemy. How can we hope to stop something that we do not understand? If we can capture one of these creatures alive, we may be able to communicate with it. And interrogate it. Find out what they want. Where they're operating from. Yes. That possibility outweighs all risks, in my opinion. I can construct a safe enough facility to house our captive, but I do not know how we could possibly communicate with it. Not to worry. I will see to that. All right. I'll speak to the commander. Alrighty. Classic. Coverage this is too dangerous coverage. scene there. Yeah. <laughs> got some new research on the way. So we gotta capture that live alien for her. Um, alrighty. Commander, based on Dr. Valen's report, I recommend we begin researching the new weapon she's calling the Arc Thrower in the labs. Once completed, we can send the plans down to engineering for fabrication, and then equip one of our troops with it in the barracks. Dr. Shen and the engineering team are also waiting on approval for construction of the containment facility that we'll need, in order to house the alien captive. Commander to engineering. Okay, so we can get alien containment. This facility will provide a secure, secure environment to house the alien captives, allowing you to interrogate them in the labs. Hmm, sounds safe to me. Go down to engineering. Commander, no doubt you are aware of Dr. Valen's request to capture one of the aliens. A sound plan, but she fails to realize that we lack a facility to safely contain a live specimen. With your approval, my team and I will begin construction of a suitable facility. Alright, so we'll get him doing that. Oh, 
Oh, okay. It's nice. We'll just put right between the training room and the satellite uplink. <laughs> Alien containment. Thank you, Commander. I'll let you know when the facility is ready. Dr. Valen has asked to see you, Commander. No doubt she wishes to explain her plan personally. Commander to the research labs. Commander to the... He's getting uh, pulled all over the place here. Commander, I'm sure you've been briefed on my request. With your authorization, we can begin research on the arc thrower immediately. Okay, let's get that one started too. We got enough to get her done. Now the mission control. <laughs> Commander, we're picking up widespread radio chatter indicating UFO sightings within our current satellite coverage area. We should begin scanning for contacts as soon as possible. Hmm. Alrighty. Okay, so you can see from this here, this is where, you know, threats are a little bit higher. Uh, China, or yeah, China's the, the worst at the moment right now. Japan ain't too pretty either, and then Australia is a little bit uh, down under as well, pardon the pun. Um, so then you can see that we're doing pretty good. So let's see exactly what we can do here. We'll start scanning for activity once again. There we found one. Looks like that satellite we launched paid off. We're picking up an unidentified fast mover. If we scramble an interceptor now, we may be able to take it down. Launch fighter at that baby. So hopefully this will keep us safe and keep uh, Canada safe as well. We'll keep North America nice and uh, all good. Hmm. Nice. Central, this is Voodoo 37. We have a confirmed kill on Obi 001. I repeat, the UFO is down. I'll copy over. Solid copy, Voodoo 37. Nice work. Central out. All right, people. Retask Recon Satellite Bravo and get me a visual on that crash site. She's coming into range now, sir. On screen. Magnify. Still in one piece. Commander, I recommend we get a strike team to the crash site immediately. Yeah, this is gonna happen. Now we're gonna have to go down in there and uh, visit that nice little ship. Possibly it's gonna like reactivate and we're all gonna die or something like that. Okay, who are we bringing? Rohani did good. We'll keep Morden in the squad. And Skinoka's back in action. Um, Yeah, I'm out for the time being. So we'll launch with these guys. This is good. The only downside is I think that it's not that bad at this point, but my guy was a little bit higher level. We're not going to risk him at this point. It's too dangerous. Get ready to deploy. Our AO is within the continental United States. It looks like the aliens went down in a sparsely populated area. If there are civilians in the area, I hope they stay clear. Things don't look too pretty here. <laughs> Alrighty. This is Big Sky. We're just north of the crash site. Strike one is in position to engage. Loud and clear, Big Sky. We'll monitor those readings from here. Strike one is authorized to assault. Now, this is a very interesting map. Definitely looks different than the other ones we've had so far. Looks like the crash site is dead ahead. We should expect heavy resistance here. There's no telling how many hostiles were on board. Approach the craft with caution and attempt a breach if possible. Copy that. So now we're 
are spread out nicely. Make sure everything's all good. There's the alien activity though. Um, start out on the wings. Actually, yeah. Uh, set up behind that log there. Hopefully that isn't too far. Okay, we're good thus far. Move in there. And again, like I said, the wings. Keep the wings moving. Close to that one. And move right there. Like I said, this is gonna get this is gonna get hairy. <laughs> okay. Still no actual signs of them yet. They're waiting for us. Sitting over there. Eating a piece of pie, probably. Just enjoying us walking towards them to our deaths. <laughs> oh, there we go. Uh oh. Two of them. Hmm. I have no shot. Okay. It's a full cover there. That's kind of nice. Now I got a shot. Ooh, that's actually a nice chance. 50-50. Take the shot, Skinoka. Oh, you can't. Wait, can you take the shot? You cannot move and fire this weapon in the same turn. Okay. Uh... Okay. We'll leave him as is. And move Chris up. this right here to protect us for the time being. I'm on the move. We'll stay back here though, just to be safe. No need to rush ahead. Their hand though will move him up just so he's in a better spot and he's still covered by the smoke. Okay, he's nice in the open now though. That's gonna be good for us. Oh, that's gonna be tough to hit him up there though. Oh, miss. Yes. Okay, we're gonna start with Skinoka, see what he can do. There we go, 55% chance. Let's try and go for him, because I think we got a good shot on him from here. Yeah, nice hit. Okay. Ooh, it's not that great of a chance. Um, let's take it anyway, we got three chances as well. That's pretty good there too. Alrighty. It's nice some nice precision there. We'll move Chris up just a bit more. The alien craft is still intact. And they've got some kind of energy field protecting parts of the ship. We'll have to look for an opening. Hmm, okay. Uh 
Uh oh. It's going down. Oh, that's a hit. Ah. Hmm. Okay. We'll hunker down. Try that out for the first time. Actually, you know what? I don't want to use the smoke grenades. We'll just use the hunker down. Okay, he's really out of range. The safest thing to do here is to get into a better position. But getting close to that is also pretty dangerous too. Uh, okay. Let's move behind there. And... Switch for the time being. Take some critical damage. Let's move up there. It seems pretty safe. I wonder if that makes that shot more powerful, or uh, I'm not sure what that actually does. So we'll find out eventually, probably. Let's take this shot. Long chance, but it might work. Oh, close. Damn it. Enemy is still alive. Do the dash up to there. Here they come. Oh no. Hmm. Oh crap. Okay. Uh. Oh crap. Study it when it's dead, Doctor. Let's take that thing down. Hmm. Now, this is a toughie because we have these guys over here. They can shoot shoot straight at her, but also Chris is up farther, so they might want to hit at him. But he's fully guarded there, so he's pretty safe. But at the same time, too, he's got a shot there. So I think, uh, not sure where I should move, but I want to throw. A grenade at him. I think we might be able to get him from there. You know what? I'm gonna risk it. I'm gonna... Move there. Seems... Heading out. And... Hmm... Come on. Yes. Incredible. It seems to have vanished. Well, that was a close one. That could have gone bad. But luckily for us, it hasn't. So, <laughs> um, but now we can close in on these guys, which is the thing that we're trying to do. Obviously, I can move up all the way to there.
Hopefully she's safe there. I think that was the right decision, though, of what we did. Just to be safe. Okay. He's got a 50-50 shot. But if I throw the grenade... I might be able to get both of them. Let's see how that goes. 50-50. Oh, look at that. That's a beauty. Mission accomplished. That's the mission as well. Well, you know, it looked a lot worse than it actually was, so we're able to handle that pretty good, and uh, we are able to capture this crash site, so I'll take it. But again, like I said, starting to get that feeling, there, there was a really close situation that could have gone wrong. I felt like in a rock and a hard place, and... I think there's going to be a situation where we might miss in one of those, and uh, that might not turn out too well. So, at least in this case, we're still keeping strong. Everybody's getting promotions. Everybody's happy. You know, they're cheering at the base, but that might not last forever. <laughs> okay, let's give these guys promotions before we finish up this episode. Hmm. Let's go for cover fire. That could potentially be something that we could use in the future that could be a benefit. And she's wounded, but I like the defensive idea of this as well. We'll go defensive of her as well, giving her that. Um Moves up the corporal. And for Holly, what are we going to give her? I'm going to go with the bullet swarm once again. I thought that was pretty good because then it gives you the option to shoot and move, which I like at least. I mean, because it, it's always. It seems like it's going to come in handy to shoot more often than not. So we'll go with that for her as well. Um, we have to take. Emily out for a little bit because of her wound, but besides from that, I think that was a good good mission. And once again, the kills are spread out as well, which is nice to see. We got some good stuff too, some new things as well. Computer power source, alien alloys, nice alien cars. Welcome back, Commander. I wanted to speak to you about our current fleet of interceptors. It's crucial that we keep several of these aircraft on high alert. We'll need them to intercept any future alien contacts, and it's likely we'll suffer some losses in the process. I think it's also worth mentioning that even a full squadron of interceptors will do no good against our enemy if we don't know where they are. Additional satellite coverage will be required before we are able to detect alien craft elsewhere on the planet. Visit us in engineering should you wish to build additional satellites. Goodbye, Commander. Okay, so uh, that's the end of this episode, guys. I hope you enjoyed it once again. I'm going to put some more effort, uh, you know, between the, this episode and next episode to do a little bit more research on uh, what can really benefit us uh, and whatnot uh, because I want it to, you know, I want us to have the best uh, possible uh, circumstance, you know, have the best uh, technology because I, I, from what I've read, at least, it, you know, it's going to be important the decisions we make. So I'm going to put a little bit of effort in to see where we should put our money, where we should make our decisions and whatnot. So, but yeah, for the meantime, um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I'll have another one upcoming soon. Uh, I think that I'm going to have this one and the previous one up uh, today, and then the next one will come tomorrow or whatnot. So stay tuned for that. And um, yeah, like I said, guys, thanks for watching, and I uh, hope you enjoyed.